Hello, this is that creepy bug guy known as Martial Horror, and I'm here to review Day of the Dead 2 Contagium. Sort of. Actually, as bad as it is, it's one of those movies that there really isn't a whole lot to say about it. Other than it sucks. Can I actually just say it sucks and go away? Damn. So what to do? Hmm. I have to pat it out somehow. Aha! I got it. I'm going to be pretentious and make this video a tribute to George Romero and his legacy of the of the dead movies. Yeah, I don't know what else to call them. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't know of George Romero, you at least know of his legacy. He didn't invent zombies, but he did reinvent them. He's the guy that taught us that the only way to kill zombies is to shoot them in the head. Or cut off their head. Or any head damage would work. And he also taught us that you can never get bitten by one, otherwise you will die and turn into a zombie. His legacy is so strong that all zombie movies practically rip him off, often without even realizing it. He just set the rules, and that's what all these movies go by. His first movie was Night of the Living Dead. Chilling atmospheric, stylish, and disturbingly gory for the time, I tend to describe this movie as a good old fright fest. But this movie spawned two remakes. The first was the 1990, directed by Tom Savini. It was okay, sporting some nice gore. The second remake was in 2004, and it was in 3D. Few people saw it, and fewer people liked it. If you ever want to see 3D at its most gimmicky, watch this one. But why would anyone bother to remake Romero's classic? There isn't really anything unique or innovative you can do differently with it. Each time someone remakes it, it just becomes more and more redundant, although granted, the fact that it's in public domain probably has a lot to do with that. As the title can get you easy money, we can probably expect many more crappy remakes in the future. But the true icon of zombie films is Romero's follow-up, Dawn of the Dead. Less of a horror film than its predecessor, Dawn is one of the few movies to tackle multiple genres at once and make them work. It is a rousing adventure film, a grisly action film, a gory horror film, and somehow it manages to fit in ample drama, amusing humor, and social commentary. How many critics love to point out this movie's study and criticism of commercialism? It is arguably, no, probably, the greatest zombie movie of all time. In Italy, the film was recut by Dario Argento and released as Zombie. Also in Italy, this was followed up by Lucio Fulci's Zombie 2. In the U.S., Zombie 2 was released as Zombie. Yeah, I know, it's confusing. It was gruesome and repulsive, which offended critics but thrilled us gorehounds. It was followed by Zombie 3, which ended up being a collaboration between an aged and long past his prime Lucio Fulci, Bruno Mattai, often considered the Italian Ed Wood, and Claudio Fragrasso, known for directing the alleged worst movie of all time, Troll 2. Of course, this collaboration was one of the most anticipated collaborations in cinematic history. No. No, it wasn't. People are mixed as to whether the film is good or bad, but few people defend the later Italian zombie sequels, which seem to have less zombie movies each time they make one. Dawn of the Dead also spawned a remake in 2004, directed by Zack Snyder, who would later become known for 300. It has its flaws and is nowhere near as good as the original, but it ended up being better than I think most of us expected. Then came Romero's Day of the Dead. How do you top a movie like Dawn of the Dead? You don't even bother. Instead, you make a movie that is completely opposite, whereas Dawn was epic, Day is claustrophobic. It is bleaker, harsher, and more brooding. This movie isn't very popular with critics as it has substantially weaker characters, but fans themselves tend to be more positive, either thinking that it's just as good as its predecessors, or, like me, they believe it's good but not as good as the previous films. But before we go into Day's legacy, let's finish with Romero. Romero's career from this point became uneven. He had successes and he had failures. But these days it seems like he only can get zombie films financed. The end result was many disappointed fans. He started his comeback with Land of the Dead, which I thought was pretty cool. Then there was Diary of the Dead, which was done in that first-person mockumentary style. Fans are diverse on it, some thinking it's god-awful, others thinking it's decent. And Survival of the Dead, his latest movie, a modern-day zombie western, has had a lukewarm reception at best either way. Romero might have been the master once, and while a great director still lurks with him, I believe, he has sadly been reduced to direct-to-DVD fodder. But while many bemoan Romero's reduced quality, I find myself praising him for his creativity. Notice that out of all of the zombie movies, none of them are identical. These are the only movies he can get made, but he makes a point to be diverse in his approach to them. Night is an old school fright fest, Dawn is epic, Day is claustrophobic, Land is post-apocalyptic, Diary is a mockumentary, and Survival is a modern-day western. 
Whether his films are becoming worse or not, at least he's trying to be creative. The other main part of Romero's legacy are those Return of the Living Dead movies, which claims Night was a movie, but based on a true story. While starting off strong, they descended into pure shit, with the last two movies being sci-fi originals, which to me is a polite way of saying they're pure shit. You know, strangely, I have a lot of copies of the Return of the Living Dead 4 and 5 DVDs just laying out there on my lawn. Oh, or maybe it's just my dog's crap. I can't tell the difference. Back to Day of the Dead. It's fun to remake in 2006. It sucked, but at least was amusing for all the wrong reasons. But the biggest pimple on the ass of Romero's legacy would be Day of the Dead 2 Contagion, which actually came out around the same time as the remake. I imagine some people were confused at this, wondering if Contagion was a sequel to the remake. But then again, I can't imagine anybody would be actually interested in watching a sequel to the remake, so let's move on. When news of the Day of the Dead 2 film reached our ears, us Romero fans became like flesh-eating zombies. When the final product came out, we did become flesh-eating zombies. We hunted the filmmakers down, and we ripped their guts out, as the director yelled at us, Okay, that didn't actually happen, but if it did and it was made into a movie, it would have made a better fucking sequel than Day of the Dead 2 Contagium. The story of Contagium starts off with a generic action scene where some guy drops a canister or something when running from the military before being killed, and the canister is found by a bunch of bad actors trying to pass as insane but come across as retarded. You see, years later, the place has become an insane asylum. But how the hell did the army miss this canister? I hate stupid militaries, and zombie movies always produce the stupidest of them. So they open the canister, see some crappy special effects, and their skin starts to peel. They slowly become flesh-eating zombie-ish things as an outbreak happens like one hour into the movie. I don't even remember what most of this movie consists of. I think my brain must have shut down throughout it. I'm pretty sure it's just crappy drama that consists of most of the screen time. Now, the one question we ask this movie is, what the hell does this have to do with Day of the Dead? At the most, it's a prequel, but these zombies act nothing like the zombies in Romero's film. They talk, they sometimes move fast, and no, they're just not Romero zombies. It makes me wonder if this movie was originally called Contagium and the Day of the Dead 2 was added much later. But this movie had a $9 million budget. I don't think they put that much money into a direct-to-video movie unless it had something to make people want to watch it, like the Day of the Dead 2 title. But speaking of which, the $9 million budget looks more like $1 million. The gore is nice when it happens, but everything looks so unbearably low budget that I wonder where the money went. The rights to the title? Hookers? Therapy to make them accept the abomination they made? The movie does have kind of an entertaining third act, but it's too late. It also sports a lot of nifty ideas, but they don't develop any of them. But worst of all, this movie just does not belong in Romero's zombie world. Although I did just think of something. It's always been ambiguous as to what started the zombie plague in Romero's movies. So this might have explained where the zombies come from. Oh no, not that stupid origin story found here. But this movie itself is the plague. People watched it and were so traumatized by it that they became flesh-eating zombies. Seriously, government, confiscate every copy of this movie and seal it up. Hell, you can even use it as a chemical weapon. Drop copies of Day of the Dead 2 Contagium into enemy territory, and they will surrender long before the end credits roll. Damn it, Riley, what did I tell you about leaving Day of the Dead 2s on my floor? Stupid dog. Sorry, yeah. My name is Marshall Hora. My mom's if you're going to have some act diarrhea, then at least have the decency to... Not enough, no. No, no, no. Get over here, you stupid dog!